Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video series, we are going to take a look at the Unreal Engine localization system. We will use Unreal Engine 5, but everything we learn will be valid for Unreal Engine 4. Ok, so let's dive into localization. This is not a sexy topic like rendering or materials in Unreal Engine, but I believe it is quite important when we want to sell our game when we are making a game and want to sell it in another country with other language, um, this will be really important. So let's first talk about some topics, some basic uh, topics that uh, usually are uh, confused between each other. Like for example, what is localization and internationalization? They usually come under the umbrella of localization, but they are not the same thing. So uh, let's see what are the differences between these two terms. First, localization is the process of adapting uh, internationalized software for a specific region or language. For example, translating text in our game to another language or, or adapting other assets to another region. In contrary, um, an internationalization is the process of uh, designing a software application so that it is easy to translate to other regions, to adapt to other regions and without making engineering changes. This is quite useful because to translate our game we don't, do not want to change code or uh, take months to translate it. In UE in Unreal Engine, the localization system is centered around the international components for Unicode library. This library is in charge of knowing what language are we in, what culture are we using, what locale are we using, and giving us the tools to translate, translate our game easily. So a locale is a set of parameters that will define the user's language, region, and any special variants that the user requires on their interface. Usually, a local identifier consists of a language code, with, which we can see on the left, in this case Chinese. Next, we have the country or region code on the right, which is in this case uh, mainland China, uh, CN. And we can also have an optional script code, in this case Hans script, which we can see on the middle, in this case Hans. The complete uh, locale would be ch-hans-cn in this case. That would identify the Chinese from mainland China with Hans script. Cultures in Unreal contain internationalization information for a particular locale. So cultures are usually similar to locales. Uh, you can see here, for example, the Spanish from Spain culture is uh, written as ES-ES and ES-MX is the Spanish from Mexico. So um, when we are trying to look for localization data it will be uh, looked for in this with this uh, name with this ID. So if we want the widest coverage, we will target only the language code. In this case, for example, in Spanish, it would be ES and nothing else. That would target Spanish from Spain and Spanish from Mexico. If we didn't have translations for those two countries, it is better that it goes for the general translation and, and that's that. So what are we going to localize? What can we localize in a game? Well, text for sure. And we can also localize fonts because sometimes you need, you need some other fonts to be able to translate something because they have special characters, for example. And then we can also translate assets. This is not as common, but it is quite useful. For example, we can um, localize a logo using textures 
we could have a logo in Japanese with Japanese characters and in European English, for example, and it would be a different texture. We can de deal with that also like we dealt with text. We would switch the texture depending on the region. Then we can also localize voice, sound, movies, media. We can also localize cutscenes, sequencer, and also animation. We could, for example, localize a skeletal mesh from a character so it looks different in the different regions. That is quite useful and is not quite as common as translating text, which is the first thing we think about when we are trying to localize something. Before working in Unreal Engine, we need to take a look at how the localization system works. This is the main uh, structure in the Unreal Engine localization system. We start usually by gathering text. We can see it in this box right here. We start from left to right. This is uh, performed by the engine automatically. It looks in whatever we decide, uh, like for example, actors or UI elements, even source code files. They look, uh, it looks for text. For example, in this case, we found options and quit. Next, using the localization dashboard or external providers, we will translate that text. For example, options and quit to Spanish, opciones and salir. This uh, process is, uh, these two processes are performed using the localization dashboard. Then the engine will package both languages, like for example here it packages English and the Spanish. And the last step is in our game switching language which will choose one of the languages. In this case, we chose Spanish instead of English. So we have opciones and salir, and that's what will be displayed in, in our game. This is when we talk about text. For assets, we will follow a similar procedure. We will look for the assets that we will want to localize. In this case, the Unreal logo in the content browser. We have the Unreal logo in English. We want to localize it to Japanese with the Japanese letters. We can do that in an external program and then tell the engine that we want to localize the image with this one. Next, the engine will package it again, English and Japanese versions of the image. And last but not least, we will switch the language depending on what the user wants. Here we have selected the Japanese image and that's what will be displayed in game. Last but not least, we are going to uh, deal with the localization dashboard in Unreal Engine to be able to perform all of these tasks. And here we will be able to manage our localization targets. And while this tool is still uh, used as experimental, it's, it has the experimental label, it's quite okay. It is uh, widely used. It has been tested for several years and it is the default way, the recommended way of localizing our game. So do not be afraid by the experimental tag because it is quite a stable tool. So that's it for this video. I hope that it has been useful to you. If it is the case, please go ahead, like and subscribe. We will see each other in the next videos in the Unreal Engine Localization System series. Thank you.